Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fair Racing vs. the Community, we would go racing with five cylinder cars. There isn't a huge amount of them to choose from, but it is a slightly different engine that we don't perhaps see used uh, all that often. There is no engine swaps either, so all of these cars are having to run with their standard engines. Uh, race one, well, we are at Sonoma. Things are getting a little bit crowded on the run through the first couple of corners. I ended up having to take to the grass almost all the way to the wall to try and avoid a uh, little bit of uh, a little bit of a spinner in the in the mid pack. The focus that we are following here though got away from all of the early chaos. Now this is not the easiest of circuits to overtake. Perhaps a little easier than the short layout. There are a couple of better uh, overtaking spots. But yeah, it's not the most straightforward of tracks to uh, get passes done. It does help if you can uh, out accelerate your rival as we head down into the hairpin. The Audi here has got that preferred inside line. Can't quite pull it up in time. It's a lovely cutback from the focus and the Ford would get the position done there. Further back, Audi RS2 event would be racing in this one up ahead. A white Audi was very, very wide on the way through that first corner, although the estate car not quite able to make the most of set up, which is a little bit too far back, kind of approaching towards that uh, that corner. The RS2 better through the corners than the cars ahead. A focus goes for a bit of an explore. In fact, further back, another car goes for a bit of an explore. The Ford gets back on the circuit. It's going to lose a position to one of the Audis as the RS2 is trying to tuck itself back, or trying to tuck itself underneath the wing of the RS3 to try and sneak a pass. Can't quite do it, although he's going to go for the cutback as everybody's struggling for grip in these opening laps. The RS3 is off across the grass. The focus does stay on the track. Both of them run wide. It's two positions in one corner for that uh, event. It wasn't actually that long before the cars towards the front would start to uh, spread out. Volvos battling over the uh, third or fourth place position on the track. This fourth place, actually, uh, with the 850 swapping through the uh, high-speed S's. Not an easy place to uh, get past them. Not a place you particularly want to be going side by side, in all, in all honesty. They do make it work without any major incidents, if only a little bit of a slide. Uh, the pink RS3, that was struggling perhaps a little bit for pace and was starting to create quite the train. An 850R had caught up to the back of it, but the Volvo was having a tough time making a move stick. I was in there and a couple of RS3s were coming to join in the shenanigans as well. The problem the Volvo was having is that it wasn't quite able to get itself into a position in any of the bigger braking zones. Even with the Audi this time around a little bit wide under braking, you can sometimes get away with that... Uh, the outside line, you can get a better run on the exit of the hairpin, and it was enough for the RS3 to hold on to the position, could outdrag the Volvo uh, heading in towards the S's, and now the Audi gets a little bit of a respite. The Volvo's coming under pressure from uh, my focus as we head through the S's. I couldn't quite get a move done to the inside, though, through these very, very quick corners. Uh, the lead Audi a little bit slow heading up towards the final turn. Now this probably your best bet in terms of overtaking. The Volvo had a sniff. It just about got the nose alongside but it wasn't going to be enough to get the pass done. Tags the back of the Audi. The Audi getting the better run anyway out of the hairpin and the Volvo would be uh, remain frustrated. At the front, it was a TT that was leading the way, although that was now coming under increasing pressure from the second place car. The focus, again, another instance though. A car looking for a way past, but was going to have to be patient. The TT would cover that inside line. The Ford having to look for the long way around. Now you can, well, if you've got a lot of grip, you can get around the outside there. It's an incredibly long corner, that one. It's a difficult one difficult enough pass even just to throw the car up the inside let alone to go the long way around the focus can't do it it's got more speed than the audi though down these straights again the tt will go defensive the fords has to go that long way around while the ford might have a little bit more acceleration that uh, audi is a bit better through the corners it can just continue to defend and continue to uh, frustrate the focus although It'll only be as long as they stay on the track, and in the end, the TT just pushes it too hard through the SE. I think it's bounced across a curve, ends up out wide. 
and then it's a straightforward enough pass. You know, it's always helpful when the car you're trying to overtake falls off the road a little bit. It wasn't even a major off, but it was just enough to allow the focus past, and it makes life a lot easier than having to, you know, try and overtake a car that is that is defending heavily, especially when the car's got the uh, got the grip. At this circuit, there's not many straights to simply outdrag somebody. Uh, once the focus was passed, it would run away a little bit at the front. I mean, this would be the closest battle. This was uh, all over a fifth and sixth place with the RS2 managing to sweep around the outside of the 850 heading uh, through the hills. Good pass. Not the again, not not a massively easy place to uh, get positions uh, positions gained, but everyone does well to uh, to keep it clean through that section. And yeah, by the time we got towards the uh, later stages of the race, it was very very spread out. I made a mistake, bin my car in a tyre bundle and fell all the way back. A uh, battle for the uh, the RS3s here at uh, this over 7th and 8th place between the pair of them, the white car looking for a way past as he gets a better run out of that final corner will get uh, to the inside. In fact, is passed before they ever make it to turn 1. Although with this little group, the white car, that little bit, f little bit faster through the corners, the sort of pinky red coloured car, that little bit better through the turn. So the white car can't afford to make any silly mistakes now. Having worked hard to get that position can't afford to uh, to make a mistake through here as the uh, car following is very very close wants to try and have a sneak up the inside isn't quite able to uh, do it the white car covers well in towards this next turn and that uh, red vehicle with not enough acceleration isn't close enough to try anything up towards the next corner as I said, at the front, it was a very, very spread out race for them. I mean, you can see the top five on, in shot there. It was just, yeah, just all a bit spread out. The focus would go on to take a victory, having uh, battled his way past the uh, TT. There was uh, no one real match for the, for the focus. But yeah, it was a little bit of a lonely race at the front. It can happen. It can, it can happen sometimes. Uh, Impega would take victory with that Ford. Uh, Twisty in second with the TT, while Tim and Ninetales would claim third with an 850R. Race number two, and we would head to the Homestead Circuit. I haven't been to this one for a little a little while. I, I quite like the Homestead Circuit. It's actually quite an interesting one. There are some very nasty corners around here, while there still being some decent enough sized straights. So, yeah, it often makes for an interesting, an interesting venue. For the uh, racing, a few cars escaping at uh, kind of turn one, turn two area, then the big old concertina effect up through the next corner. I was continuing to have no luck with my starting positions, always being dumped to the back of the field, which is always going to make a rather difficult time. The Volvo we are following here I did have a good start, making up a number of positions. In fact, going to go three wide down the first of the straights. The Volvo to the inside would get past the Audi, or both the Audis, in fact, the, uh, the RS3 and the RS2. A van as they head around the next corner. The Volvo was uh, up a good number of positions on that opening lap. I was, well, still very much stuck in traffic, trying my best to uh, carve my way through the field with the uh, focus. I got past one Ford, sort of, around those final corners, although I couldn't quite hold it on the exit. The banking here is notoriously mean for cars. You hit the banking hard, uh, you often get fired up the circuit towards the wall. You'll be very mindful of that. Wasn't too bad with this particular selection of vehicles, though, which is uh, which is always, always good. Uh, my focus would uh, get the pass eventually done. Might have not quite got it stuck on the final corner, but I would get it through the first couple of turns. There's a big old squabble uh, going on further up ahead. It haven't got clear. I could carry some pretty decent quarter speed, and I was now chasing down a quattro. I had a good run down this straight. Going to have a look up the inside, try and get that breaking, uh, breaking right. The Audi uh, sees I'm coming there, is happy to not fight so much through that corner. Actually goes for the cutback, tries to get a better run on the exit. He gets his nose alongside, but doesn't quite have the momentum to uh, match the focus. At the front, and it was an RS3 that was leading the way, but coming under uh, increasing pressure from that 850. The 850 just too quick down those straights in the end for the poor Audi. Uh, the, the Volvo a little bit of a bump, and it was the Audi that came off much worse with a big slide. Uh, now the two Audis are going to be stuck uh, fighting side by side. The RS3 uh, fending off the Quattro, though, through these first turns. Yeah, the 850s, depending on how they were built, some of the 850s were massively fast. Massively, massively fast down the straights. This was another one that uh, was incredibly quick uh, when it got to the straight sections, although then 
of course, the flip side of that is it's going to be rather difficult to drive when it gets to some of the other sections. The, the 850R here uh, making the pass long before they ever get towards the first corners. However, wheel on the grass through on the exit of turn one sliding about means that as soon as they get to the actual tight technical sections, the RS2 Avant is going to have the advantage. The Grey Volvo in this little group was not as fast when it came to the strikes, but better through the corners. And the more this group fought, the more it helped me. I was behind in trying to catch up to uh, this particular one, and this would become the battle for fourth place. So it was, you know, pretty high up, high up group of cars fighting here. The uh, 850, or the blue 850, eventually getting himself to the inside. The Audi's still looking. The Audi's still got the grip. It knows it can make stuff stick around the outsides, although if that straight line speed was just too much. And once cleared, the, uh, the blue Volvo would run away a little bit. As I said, these, these, this squabbling would allow me to catch up with the focus and to try and join in the fight to continue my march forward. The focus working pretty well around here. Wasn't on the same sort of pace as the lead 850, but uh, it wasn't too bad at all. It's probably one of the second or third best cars around this uh, around this circuit. As uh, I would try and get a move to stick on a on the 850. Although, of course, as soon as we start fighting the RS2, might have struggled for overall pace. Perhaps not quite quick enough down the straights. But as soon as the cars ahead are starting to fight and slowing each other down, the RS2 is always right there looking. For for a way back past. I could match the Grey Volvo just about for straight line speed, keep it on the inside. That 850's got to go a very, very long way around, although he's going to uh, he's going to give it a good try as we head up towards the hairpin. Now, I don't really want to be on the outside. I got pretty good grip in the focus. I wasn't sure I'd had enough to go around the outside, so my plan had been to cut underneath, but it didn't quite come off. A bit too much uh, wheel spin from me, a little bit too eager on the throttle. Didn't quite work for that. Now, I had actually thought this 850 was quicker than me down the straights. It has better initial acceleration, but it can't match me for a top-end speed, although I've still got nowhere to go. It's a long way around the outside of a very, very fast corner. Does not quite come off for me. I had a wheel on the grass. I managed to pull it up in time, though, as I'm still there looking. Of course, the longer we spend fighting, the more that blue Volvo up ahead uh, escapes away. Thankfully for me, the uh, grey Volvo gets a big, big slide uh, across that final corner curb, and that would allow me to, in the end, get past relatively easily. Uh, further back, the fight's for 10th place. Audi Quattro versus TT as they head down towards this uh, sort of big break. So good overtaking opportunity here. I, just, I think one of the reasons why I like this circuit is there are actually quite a few good spots to uh, try and get, uh, get passes done. The TT not quite able to pull that one off, though, on uh, on the first attempt. So your, your next corner, this hairpin, is another good overtaking spot. The TT is going to have a big time. The Quattro thought about trying to defend. However, Quattro quickly realised the TT was a little bit too far alongside that uh, the Quattro having to change his mind. Couldn't quite defend that one. C could have perhaps moved across a little bit sooner to have blocked the line, but it's a good pass. It's a good pass in the end by the TT. Gets the brakes judged uh, perfectly and gets the overtake done. At the front, having got to the leads, well, no one could really touch the 850R uh, in terms of in terms of lap times. The rest of us were quite a long way off and, yeah, got to the front, got in clean air and ran away from, well, just about everybody. Yeah, even if I've been near it, I don't think... Okay, I was in traffic, but I don't think my focus had had a match for the uh, for the Volvo. Yeah, good combination of speed and handling, and yeah, really, I mean, you can't even see second and third. That's how far away, how far away that Volvo got. I would though have the best finish of the lot, fighting for a fourth place here, trying to chase down an 850R. Now the blue Volvo was very quick down the straights. I knew my opportunity was going to come around these final corners where it struggled immensely and I knew I had to give it absolutely everything into these final turns. I draw up alongside, I give it space on the way through the second part and then it's just the run to the line. I really hoped I'd been able to compromise the Volvo enough to slow it down. I hadn't quite. Another lap and maybe I could have done something about it but when it comes down to a drag race towards the finish line, the car with all the power that's going to be the one that is uh, going to take the victories. A Clays would take a first position. Second to uh, to the Bratmobile in an Audi Quattro, while third would go to TR King Cobra in an RS3, although they had very lonely races in that one. Again, much like the, uh, the first race, quite lonely races for the front once they'd all sort of settled themselves down. 
our third and final race today that would head to the Virginia International Raceway to the full layout uh, this is again it's another slightly less used circuit an interesting track very quick around here very very quick indeed a couple of very dangerous places with some tyre bundles if things uh, go a little bit awry uh, somebody was going to be brave and have a transit although of course they are stuck with using their standard engine a five cylinder diesel uh, you don't get a huge amount of power and it was not it was only sort of a mid-ish B class it was always likely to struggle especially at a track like this where there's a lot an awful lot of uh, straights that Audi TT would lead the way from a Volvo, a couple of RS3s and 850R would uh, chase through as the transit, well you can see the struggles the transit would have in terms of that uh, straight line speed, the Volvo is having a think about going too wide but you don't really want to be too wide on the opening lap through this very very fast section, you might not quite be flat out in these sort of cars but you're going to be going pretty damn close to it, the Volvo sideways, the TTs do a little bit of rallycross as does the Transit and the purple RS3, very easy mistake to uh, to make, the 850R carries a lot of speed into this uh, final section to try and draw up alongside the RS3, does get a good run on the exit as we have another long long straight down here and sure enough that Volvo with such a good run off of that uh, off of that corner would be able to out drag his opposition again it wouldn't be long before the field would start to separate it's kind of a little bit unusual in, in this kind of a racing perhaps with such restrictive selection only a few cars able to run with their five cylinder engines but uh, yeah it wasn't long before we would start getting very very big gaps at forming it made it very difficult for me starting all the way at the back constantly to even stand a chance of making progress up through the field because he lost so much time battling uh, early on. This uh, TT trying to uh, recover or trying to try and make his way up through the field uh, had a good drag race with an RS3 all the way down the back straight. Had got himself in the position he wanted, just asked too much of the car, skates it through on the brakes, does manage to pull it up in time amazingly before hitting anything important. Uh, an easy, easy mistake to make at that corner. Very easy mistake to make, just asking that tiny bit too much of the car uh, we've all been off there at some point uh, at the front the CT would uh, lead the way although that was coming under pressure from an 850R and a second 850 was coming to join in as well uh, as soon as you start fighting like this this is the first kind of opportunity that, yeah, the green Volvo really had to to get in on the well, to try and make a pass get in on the action and as soon as you start fighting like that, it's immediately going to start costing you time. And you've seen in the space of a corner or two, uh, the black Volvo would catch right up to the back of this pair as they head down the, down the well, kind of straight. As I said, it's not a place you want to really be following the car ahead very closely. It is easy for someone to make a little mistake and actually quite difficult to see. Unfortunately, that battle would all go a little bit wrong with a lag spike uh, sending the green Volvo around and dumping him down to fourth. The uh, transit, well, that would gradually fall back through the field. We kind of expected it to struggle, and sure enough, it wasn't long before it did start to plummet down towards, well, towards the outside of the top ten. I was trying to find a way past. Uh, what I did learn is, you know, I drive in cockpit view, and if you follow the transit through those S's, you don't actually see a thing. I was basically hoping the transit didn't fall off the road because I followed where it went. You could not see a thing, and that is at some near flat-out corners rather scary rather scary to to say the least i had a look at going around the outside i couldn't quite make i couldn't quite make this pass stick around the outside but that transit being a little bit down well i say a little bit down on power should be it's, it's power to weight ratio is a little bit down compared to the rest of us as long as i stayed near it i could get past it uh, now there was very little going on outside this group you did see i just overtook a transit well in a near carbon copy maneuver i fell off the road fell back into the same position in this group and on the final lap was determined not to be beaten by a transit again the downside of following the transit if the transit falls off the road you fall off the road with it not the cleverest uh, <laughs> maneuver but we both kind of get away with it the volvos there having a look around the outside this time i don't go for the uh, spectacular i couldn't get my vehicle to try the spectacular around the outside of the uh, transit but the good news for me is that uh, it didn't really matter too much because once again i would have the straight line speed i would have the acceleration to be able to simply out drag the transit down towards the next corner it was another it was another race where we had just some some big some big spread out groups as i said 
Uh, it might have been a different story at the front had there not been a, a bit of a lag, weirdy collision uh, going on that sent the green 850 around. Uh, because, yeah, who knows what might have happened, what might have transpired with uh, that particular battle. As it was, the uh, the black Volvo did not have any time to recover to go and uh, chase down the TT. It was gradually closing, but it wasn't going to be fast enough. The Audi would take a victory with, another, again, another lap, and there might have been some, uh, some interesting shenanigans going on there. On to the podium, and Tristy would take victory with that a TT. Kalees in second with the Volvo, while Invisible AK would round out the podium with another one of the TTs. Unfortunately, as it does sometimes go, there was, yeah, some fairly big old gaps going on in the field in this one. Uh, in all three races, there was a fair few lonely cars around around the place. Whether it's just how the races ended up, whether it's how the cars cars were built, etc. It's yeah, got a little bit got a little bit separated. I had some fun racing. I didn't have I didn't drive great. My focus wasn't a bad car. I just made a few too many silly mistakes. Although I did end up uh, being involved in battles throughout most of the races, which was at least something uh, for me. But yeah, sort of the top four often would be mile. Well, sometimes not miles apart, but often just far enough apart that they weren't able to really be uh, be sort of battling for position. So yeah, it is it is just sometimes the way it goes. That though is going to be it. For, uh, for this week's Versus Community. The next one is going to be held on Thursday, the 28th of June. We are going to go racing with an open C-Class lobby. If you want to take part in that, then you can sign up via our forums. There'll be a link in the description. Find the Fail Racer Versus the Community section, and that is where you can, uh, can sign up. That's going to be it from me, though. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.